Hello folks. Well, as you saw in my previous videos, I've had three EDF failures and two ESC failures on my rare Byron F-16. Oh no! So cost per flight is still quite high. I've got no motor. Some of you made comments about me not having high enough C batteries, larger wires, or the right motor. Well again, the very first flight of this jet all went well. The motor was a 500 kV and the batteries 15 C. All the problems, however, began when I added higher C batteries. Well, that actually should have worked, but something else must be wrong. And yes, we know what it was. Uh-oh. If this is the first Quit. time you've visited my channel, this video is a synopsis of this F-16 project. Plus, I show how that Castle Creation ESC program works too, as I was asked. Plus, how I made my spark arrester. After plenty of test runs on the bench, I had already addressed those issues, including using a Castle Creation 160HVF ESE, 1560C batteries, and 10 AWG with 6mm bullet connectors. All oh, that should have worked, right? But... As you saw, it quit again. Burned up the motor. Some of you then suggested I rewire the motor myself. <laughs> You know, I did that many years ago, and it's a very tedious, complicated, and not always works. Here's a picture of the motor, so you could see this would be pretty difficult. You know, I have spent, to me at least, a lot of money in this experiment, including buying the jet, ESCs, EDFs, the radio, all the different batteries, etc. Plus, I had to build the jet, cover the wings, and paint the fuselage, and modify it to fit the fan. I thought it was going to be a piece of cake to make it electric. But I have recently considered actually putting the messy nitro engine in it for which it was designed in the first place. And no, a real turbine isn't going to work in this jet due to various heat concerns and especially the price. So again, like I said in my last video, after I contacted the seller of this fan, he advised me that it really shouldn't run on higher C 12S 42.2 volt batteries, but should run only on 6S 22.2 volt batteries. Well, no kidding. That's the real reason it blew up, you know, twice the voltage that it's rated for. I actually did all the right things in the first place, and had the specs been right, it actually would have worked. So the cost has been about $850 for each flight when you consider the entire cost. <laughs> and now, one of my subscribers suggests I buy a new fan for $500. <laughs> but you know, most of my models I have were donated to me after the fire, and I've spent time to restore them for flight. I just can't justify spending more and more money on this project when we're still in a recovery mode here. But alas, Don DiGidio, who suggested that I try this different fan, graciously offered to send me a new fan that actually is supposed to be able to run on the 42.4 volts. And this is what that JP Hobby fan looks like. Well, you know, that's fantastic, and I am very humbled by his generosity. So thanks very kindly, Don. I'm going to install it, bench test it, and if all goes well, I'm going to try to fly it when we have a good weather day. I was asked how to program the Castle Creation ZSC. First of all, you want to hook up your USB cable to the Castle link. This is the wire that comes from the ESC and connects to the throttle channel on the receiver. You have to unplug it to use it for this. Next, you need to apply power to the ESC. Since mine's already mounted in there, I'm just going to go ahead and hook up, and I don't need to hook up all 42 volts or both batteries. I'm just going to hook up the one uh, 6S battery here, so red to red. Boy, they always spark, don't they? And open the Castle Link program on your computer. And it says it's green, USB connected device link, okay? Now we have a green light, so everything is good to go. So we're going to take a look at the throttle here. So throttle spots, everything there is good. So we're going to look at the brake, disabled. Looking at the cutoffs. Okay, this is set for 3.2 volts per cell. That's when it's going to cut off. And it's also set for the soft cutoff. All right. And current limiting is set for 240 amp. The motor, uh, Start power 59%, normal 5 degrees. We're going to set it at 5 degrees. I can set this at any any kind of degree I want. Uh, normal, high or low, 0, 10. So I'm just going to go with the normal, which is that. Forward direction and the uh, 
PWM rate 12 kilohertz. The logging is set to log all of these different items right here, which is really great. If I want to look at the last download log data, I can click this. There is none in there because I have already downloaded it for the next time and we're going to run this motor with a clear. It's like a click clear here. Okay, and I could save it and print it. And uh, this, is, this is basically it. So everything is all set up. We're going to go to back to the about here. Then once you get everything set up, you just click uh, send settings to the device. And I will go ahead and click that. And update setting complete. Okay, the EDF came today and I've installed it. The motor screws were slightly different and it had to sit a little bit forward of the last fan. The hardest part was really getting the air tube installed securely to the fan body, getting it all put in the fuselage so it wouldn't blow out the tail. Also soldering the included bullet connectors to the ESC wires are a challenge. As many of you know, you must have a soldering gun that will actually heat up those big wires. I've run it twice for three minutes each and it all went well. I ran the fan on 50C Venoms with timing set at 5 degrees and then the 60C Huvo LiPos with timing set at 0 degrees. The results on the data logging were pretty close and I didn't see that the specs were that much different. 0 degrees timing produced more ESC heat but the motor heat was supposed to go down but it was only a few degrees of the same averaging around 205 degrees. But here first is my spark arrestor. Okay, as most of you know, when you've got a high voltage like this, these capacitors will really spark when you uh, hook them up. Uh, let me see if you can see this. But, if I put my spark arrestor in there, my homemade spark arrestor, show you how to do this this in here and before plugging it in you want to just put the resistor charge the battery so I'm going to go ahead and plug this in now when I plug this in there'll be no spark See that? so that's how you eliminate the spark I used a 47 ohm resistor between the two poles of the XT60 connector. Then I used banana plugs to wires and soldered them to the joined male and female bullet connectors. So you just simply plug the resistor in first so the ESC capacitors charge slowly, then connect the center bullets for the main power after that. Electricity always takes the path of least resistance, so the resistor is basically out of the circuit during operation. Works every time and no spark. All right, let's go take this thing and see if it can fly. We got wind at uh, 14, 15. Pretty windy today, folks. And it's kind of cold and windy, and I'm anxious to do this because we're going to get snow next week. And so uh, this flight for you, Don, and uh, let's hope this works. Sure as heck would drive me nuts if I had to wait eight months for winter to be over before I tried this, so <laughs> let's hope this works. I'm using the 50C Venom batteries, 42.4 volts for this flight. I do a lot of split S turns because it takes less room and uh, it but it really cranks when it's coming down. And this of course is the pilot's view. Straight up. There's the split S again from the ground view. Uh, one easy vertical roll. Followed by the split S again. Oh boy, it's cranking. It looks like the camera's loose, but actually the gyro on the camera does that. I should have shut it off. I can do that next time.
time we roll to inverted. a little bit here. Half throttle. Well this F-16 really has great vertical capabilities with that new JP Hobbies fan. set up for a landing. Those were the 50C Venoms. So my confidence has been renewed, so let's go ahead and try another two-minute flight, this time with the Huvo 60C batteries. Excellent vertical again, followed by a split S. Back to the vertical with two rolls. Slow it down a little. Half throttle. All right, let's set up for a landing. degrees so that's really good it's okay to be at least 200 oh man thank you Don <laughs> here's how many milliamps were still in the batteries as you can see I probably could have flown another minute on the Venom 50c batteries so thanks again Don and thanks everybody for watching and I hope you enjoyed this and maybe you picked up something all I know is this fan lives up to its specs and is really amazing.